what's going on everyone shiva sapkota here with another tesla review today we are reviewing the 7.5 inch rear climate control and entertainment display from hansho last week i posted a video showing you all what this screen was about but i told you that next week which is this week i was going to bring detailed step-by-step installation guide and review of this unit we're going to do a lot of testing here today we're going to show you the airflow testing we're going to do all the app testing bluetooth testing a lot of testing in this video to so that you can make your decision of if this is the right product for you or not this is definitely better than the previous generation displays because it has a larger air vent here but the installation is also more difficult so i want to show you all of that here in today's video if you find today's video helpful please help us out by giving us engagement that means liking subscribing sharing anything that you want to let me know in the comment section below that would greatly help because it helps us rank higher in youtube's algorithm in return we will continuously bring latest and greatest and awesome tesla accessories for you all thank you very much let's get started so this is definitely a lot more hardware than what we typically see on other version of this rear display. I was not expecting this. It was shocking to me when I saw all of this in the package. But let me explain detail step by step on what each of these do so that when we actually install it, you have a better idea of how to install this and where go everything goes. So first of all, this is the main unit here and um, you have got your mic. Um, here input the reset and uh, there is a usb output here and then i believe this is for the uh, sim card so i think we're gonna be able to put sim card in here to make this work we'll give it a try and then see if the sim card actually works of course here is your air vent uh, that you can control now uh, where you can go this way uh, for for the passengers uh, it does not go up or down so just keep that in mind it will only go sideways not up or down so that is a big disadvantage with this system but this is a lot better than the version 2 where the air vents were basically the size of this bottom panel here so this is a lot better we're going to do some air testing here in just a second now if you have a usb a instead of usb c this is where you remove this unit there is some screws that you can use to remove this and then install this one so then you will instead of having a usb c here you would have an usb a they sent both on my kit. I'm assuming they do that for everything there. So that's what this unit does. This is the main unit we're going to be installing. Now, this is the air vent. Uh, so we're going to be installing this with the air vent here. So it, it almost goes like this here and then aligns it. And then this unit actually goes towards the air vent side for the car. I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. This is, of course, the actual screen, um, and this needs to be connected with this and a bunch of other wirings that I will show you as we show the installation process here. It's very unique that the screen actually comes as a separate thing instead of integrated, and this is the cover panel. So at the end, uh, when we're done with the install, this is what we are going to install on top uh, so that it looks better. It's not like a skeleton here. Now, um, moving on to some of the wirings here. Uh, this is definitely a lot more wiring than what we're used to seeing, but it's a pretty straightforward process. This is your OBD bypass. I'll show you how to do that. This is your transmitter. Uh, this is also a control box where everything is, this is basically the brain of this unit, and we'll just put this right here. So that is your uh, control box transmitter whatever you want to call that and this plugs into here now it lives with a a few other wiring uh, this is the wiring that we are going to install directly on the back of the screen here so there is a place for that and then also this little uh, plug goes right here i'll show you again when we're doing this inside the car but just wanted to give you an idea right now during the unboxing process then you are left with two different inputs and these are right here there is a very small skinny cable here this skinny cable this whole unit um, actually goes and plugs it on the driver side so this is the driver seat and if you do not have a lumbar support you don't even have to install this you can ignore this also the other one is for your seat adjustment and if you do not want to install the seat adjustment or you do not like the seat adjustment aspect of this thing then you don't even have to install this but those are the two things the skinny cable again goes to the driver side the thicker cable goes to the seat adjustment, so that's the passenger side. This seat, uh, the seat massage function, which I'll talk about it later in the video, is only applicable for the cars with the lumbar support, like my Model 3, but not my Model Y. So that's everything that you have got here. Um, and then they also, of course, send you the hardware to attach everything together. Now, uh, because it is a heavy installation process, it definitely is gonna take you about 20 to 30 minutes more than 
the plug and play installation that we did in the past with the other units. So a couple of tools, you're going to need a pry tool. You're going to need a Torx uh, 15 and 20. I believe you might also need a 10. So a couple of Torx bit. I'll tell you which ones that you need as I open my car here. A regular screwdriver and a something like a little hook here because we got to remove the air vents and that is pain in the butt. So a hook might help, but I'll show you how to do that. So that is everything. Let's go ahead and get started with the install. So the first thing we'll start here is with the removal of this unit here. Um, nothing fancy, you don't need a pry tool or anything. You just have to pry using your finger here and just grab onto this top unit. There are no screws, nothing. You just pull this out. And when you pull this out, it just comes out like this, uh, super easy. Shouldn't require too much force. I have never removed this unit actually, and uh, it came out really easily. Now for the newer cars uh, with the USB-C here, you're going to see this plate where all you have to do is just lift up on this plate here. And then while holding this up, you can just pull this out and then it comes out. Now, if you have a unit with a USB-A here, then there's going to be a little button that you have to pinch in the middle and while holding it down, you just pull that out and then it comes out. So between different units, that is, that's the difference, USB-C versus USB-A. Next, we're going to remove this bottom panel here. Nothing special, you just have to take a pry tool here and then pop this out. It shouldn't require much force. Uh, there's just a few clips that are connected here that are all connected here and this is where your OBD plug is. In this next step, we are going to grab this Torx 20 bit here and then remove this Torx 20 screws. Uh, there are just two screws holding this middle piece together. So we are just going to go ahead and remove this piece. Go ahead and remove the other screw. Now we have removed both of these screws. We're gonna keep this in a safe place because we are going to need it here for the next step. Now in this next step, we are going to remove this unit entirely. And uh, to do that, you just have to reach here in the bottom and then just pull this out and it should come out super easily. There is just a few clips that are attached to this. Now this entire bottom panel is removed. Well, we have this area open here in the bottom. Let's go ahead and do the OBD bypass. To do that, all you have to do is pinch on this middle part here and while holding it down, pull this out. Now put this male adapter from the new wire harness into the female adapter exactly like the Tesla. You will hear a click. Then go ahead and do the same thing on this side where you would attach the male and the female. Now this is complete. This wiring is complete. The OVD wiring is done. Now we will do the rest of the wiring after we install this unit here. Now the next step involves removing this air vents here because we got to remove this USB-C unit uh, from this original Tesla panel and put it onto this new panel here. And um, unfortunately, that this, was, this part is not a plug and play. You do have to remove this unit and put it over there and transfer everything. And Tesla, because they put the screws for this on the back side, because there is a screw that is holding this circuit here, but they put it from the back side. If it was from the front side, we could just remove it put this out, we don't have to worry about it. But because they put it on the back side here, we do have to remove this air vent. And this is pretty scary if you have never done this in the past, but rest assured that it's not difficult. It's just a tedious process. And there are two Torx 20 screws here. So just use your uh, Torx screwdriver here and then remove those two Torx 20 screws. And then we got to pull out the air vent. But if you take a look at it, those were the only screws here. There's nothing else, but there are these pins on the side that are grabbing onto this air vent from all directions. And if you start pulling this from one direction by lifting some of this, the other side might kind of wedge in and then it locks into place. So it feels like a never ending process, but trust me, you just have to apply a little bit more force than what I would normally recommend just because this requires it. There are some pins on the very, very inner part here that you can use a uh, hook like this to kind of grab on, to kind of push into pride and then pull it out. But the easiest method, honestly, I have found is just to apply gentle pressure throughout and then this unit should just come out. So it, it, it feels like I'm breaking it and I do not like doing this uh, part, but that's the only way to do this is to remove it 
from all directions and and it does come out it just takes a little bit of force and you gotta give it a pretty good tug as you can see it is it's pretty stubborn and uh, i just have to pull it as you can see it is it is pretty loose right now so should come out any moment now uh, you just have to kind of pry on each side as you can see that side is out now we just got to work on this side here a little bit and it comes out as you heard it made some noise but as you can see here, I didn't break any of these clips. It's just the nature of these clips, how they attach to this unit. It, it comes out like that. Uh, the, the clips are still intact. And that's what I was trying to show you earlier with this hook, that once uh, this, this things on the bottom um, are hooked like this, because they are wased into these clips, um, if you want to use a hook like this and then just pry this out a little bit and then pull it out, that is also another option. Now we gotta remove this unit here, this USB-C unit with the USB-C ports. And the process is pretty easy. You need a Torx 10 bit here. So put the Torx 10 bit, and then you just have to remove these two black screws that are on the side. So we're going to remove this one. Uh, don't, don't force it and be gentle with this step. One is out. Uh, let's do the same thing for the other one. Now the other one is out. So both of these um, screws are out. Then this process is super easy, just slides out. I wish it was that easy without removing this air vent. But once the air vents are removed, this is done. All we need is this unit and the two black screws that we just removed. This air vent unit, as well as this bracket, we are not going to need it, but I would recommend putting these screws back into the air vent here and then uh, just so that you don't lose it because we are not going to need these two screws either and put this in a safe place. In case you don't like your new unit with this thing, then you can always revert it back to your original unit. Now in this next step, we're actually going to grab this USB-C unit that we removed earlier and plug it in uh, to this USB-C unit. Uh, and we just have to align this like this way and then just plug this in because this is the OANM unit and it should just fit really here and you should hear a click. So now after you make this connection here, you are going to face this clip down. Um, again, this clip faces the same location as this Tesla logo here with the information. You're going to flip this over like this. Then you are going to just slide this into its place right here in the air vent. And the easiest way to align this is look on the other side and just align the two USB ports. As you see, the two USB ports are aligned. Now, all there is left to do is install these two screws here. So these are the black screws that we removed from the OEM Tesla unit earlier. So there's one here that goes here, one here that goes here. That way, this whole unit is going to be secure and it's gonna be facing this way. So let's go ahead and install those two screws next. Now, while you are tightening these two screws here, one thing you gotta be very, very, very careful is this thing is kinda at an angle. So you need to tighten these screws, but do not over tighten them. As soon as you hit some resistance, just leave it. It's not going to move and uh, you are not going to break this unit. So just do not over tighten this. As soon as you get some resistance, just stop right there. This is already super secure, so you don't have to apply any more pressure or any more force. You don't have to secure this fully. It is kind of sitting at an angle here. After you hook up this USB-C here, all you're going to do next is grab this cable. This is the harness that connects to the OBD. And we are going to just grab this black piece. Uh, this is the, the, the piece that looks like this. It has a yellow, red, white cable. Then. We are also going to grab this harness uh, that came with the kit. It has this the same unit like this here that matches as well as uh, a white plug and then there's a little antenna there and a little small red and black plug. So what we're going to do is actually grab this and then match it with this here. So we're going to match it with this and simply plug this in and it just goes very straight right here and you will hear a click when it goes in so you are going to make that connection now you haven't you haven't plugged in anything else just that plug that came from the obd now you made that connection with the extension and this is the only thing that we are going to take up to the screen everything else stays in the bottom 
So the next thing that we're going to do is actually install this air vent. It makes our life a lot easier if we install this first. So we need to remove this uh, Torx 20 screw from here on the top. And then we just have to put this air vent inside. Face this pointy thing towards out, towards you while you're installing it. There is this foam here. And what you need to do is actually put this inside the air vent. So directly inside the air vent so the air does not leak. And uh, you just have to put this here and then slide it in. Make sure that it goes in, fully in, so that you don't have any leakage in air. Now, if you look at it closely here, if we bring the camera closer to here, um, there is a plug that just simply plugs in. That's how you know that that went in right and then on the other side too it's the same deal this goes in tightly here now we need to look at it here on the top and all we have to do is the torx 20 screw that we removed earlier we're just going to put this back on and uh, just secures this in place we are going to need this hook later on and i'll explain that process here in just a second but this air vent is now good to go we can now bring in the bottom panel here so a couple of things we need to do on this bottom piece here. If your kit didn't come with this already plugged in, most likely it didn't, then you just have to plug this piece in here and then it clicks in place. Well, the way you know the sides are this thing on the other end. It looks like this. This is the one that goes into the screen. This one goes into the back here, so plug that in. Next thing we're going to do is remember if we took this extension here earlier and then plugged it into this unit here, we're going to grab this little plug that just has a red and black and we are going to just make that connection right here. This is the plug that is coming out of this bracket. and We are going to connect it here to make this connection. Just make sure this clicks. This is your speaker cable so that is very important that it clicks and connects. Now uh, we just have a few more uh, things to route in the top. There's just two more. Uh, there is this one and this one and those two plugs need to go all the way to the screen so we gotta route it from this edge here so that we can take it out on the screen and then tuck it in so now one more plug that you have to install here is this control unit and this is the one that matches here this is the only plug that goes in so you're not going to get this wrong just plug this in and secure it now, if you look at it in a Model Y, we don't have very much space here to hide anything. So for cable management wise, you can leave this actually here. You can probably even put a double sided tape and then just stick it right here before putting this whole thing in. Uh, just again, be careful about your wire management, but uh, it just requires a some organizational skills to manage all of these wires and hide it in here. But if you put it here, it actually goes in pretty nicely and you still um, you still hide this and you don't have to put it down here so you're able to put the bracket back on. Um, the only two things that we still have are these two black plugs. These are for the seat adjustment and the seat massage. So we're going to leave those out for now. Another tip for you all is that if you are routing this, this is the bottom cable and these are the seat connectors that you need to pass it from this edge here, not from the middle because that's where the screw is gonna go. So from this edge here, so it kind of becomes leveled and you are able to pass this without any issues. All we are going to do here is just slide this in and you might wanna remove this uh, 3M sticker here. So you could do that uh, for a permanent install. Uh, if you are just testing it, you don't have to, but you can also do this here so that this becomes more secure. So this is the sticker here and we are just going to slide this into its place, align it in the bottom on both sides. Then we're just going to push this in. And that's how this will, this whole thing will get secured. So just make sure that the clips grab onto all of this. We have two screws that we still need to install here in the bottom. I'll show you how to do that in just a second, but this is secured for now. Now we are going to install this screws that we removed earlier. These are Torx 20 screws so that we can secure this unit in place on both sides here, on the right and left. Now we have secured this unit here fully, the air vent unit, everything is connected. There are just two plugs that we need to plug in this screen. Let's go ahead and put this screw to secure it. There are two screws here. These are just the standard Phillips head screws. So use your Phillips head screwdriver 
and we are just going to secure it here. Uh, this secures this unit with the air vent here. And remember, the air vent, we secured it here on top earlier, so that one is fully secured. This is it's all connected. That's how the assembly works. All right, final push. We just need to install this screen here, and this is the, the cable that goes right here. You just push this in, and it plugs into its place, and you'll know because it will be super tight here. And then we are also going to grab this unit here and then push this in to secure it. It just goes like this and push it in. And um, we need to go activate the car. And then you'll see it right here. The screen works, so we did it. It works. Now let's go ahead and finish the installation here. So how this screen goes is there are two screws in the bottom. So we are going to be installing two screws here to attach this to this bracket here. And this clips actually go on the side and then install it here. So all we have to do is simply push this in. Just align it like this where you have the clip here, the clip here, the two screws here, and then just push it in. And that's it. Now this is in place. Now we got one screw here one is screw here, one is screw here. Then we are ready to just put the top bracket and we're done. So let's go ahead and install this screws next. Now we're going to take this Phillip head screw that came with the kit here and then just install it right here. So just grab the Phillip head screwdriver and install the screw so you secure it here. Next, you got this screw that you need to install here to secure this uh, screen here with this bottom bracket. And then we got one more screw. The final process with all of these screws installed is that we are going to put this face plate in. And if you look at it, there is three clips here that go into these three clips here. There's one clip on the top that goes right here. And that is it. Uh, so we just have to align those three clips in the bottom and then the top and then simply push this in and it will clip into its place. And there you go. We did it. Uh, this looks really nice. Now the only thing left to do is our seat buttons. So we're going to go ahead and install that next. So the process is exactly the same for both the passenger side as well as the driver side. So I'm just going to show you the passenger side, how to bypass the connector. But the goal here is we're going to take this cable, route it through underneath here, pass it through there. And if we lift this floor mat here, as you can see, there's a cutout in the carpet. We're just going to route it under this carpet. There's plenty of space here. Then we're going to route it from here and then take it out from the other side. Look, so here, as you see, we are able to pass it underneath the seat. So you just start with this plug and then pass it through here. So, and then you can hide it under this carpet cutout. So just push it and then hide it, but get all the length out now while we're routing it. We are good to go. Now we can just use this here and then hide it on this cutout. So again, hide it here. You can also use a pry tool to further hide this cable. Then go under this air vent panel and then continuously hide the cable to route it to the other side. Here is the cable that we fished from inside. And you just have to work a little bit here work around some of these plugs and uh, you can get this plug from this opening right here. So you could do that. You just have to make sure that everything is aligned and you are not, you know, w once you, this is all done, you're gonna make sure all this pistons and everything, you're, you're not interfering with any of that by going through the inside. But the inside route is much, much cleaner and you wanna make sure that you have enough slack so that when the seat is pushed all the way front, so right now, this is the maximum it will go. You have the cable with the inadequate slack here. There are two ways of accessing this plug. You could just move this seat a little bit here and you can, or there is a screw right here if we wanted to tap into that screw. Uh, so both methods are shown here. You could either go through here or let me show you how to open that screw. So what we did here was we just simply pulled this plug out from that opening and now we are going to plug this female end of the new harness to the male end of this plug. And then we're going to 
So after you do this, so it should click in place, so which it did. Now we are going to plug this male in, exactly like how this purple and red wires were. We're going to plug it in here on this plug. What you wanna do is, if you see this pin side, you wanna face this towards the left. So you wanna face this little notch here towards the right and then align it to the hole and then you're gonna push it in. Space is very tight here. We made that plug and then that, the other ones, the yellow ones are the bypass plugged and then the new harness is connected now. Here is the second method of connecting that same cable. The screw sits directly under the seat at a tight space. It's harder to remove that screw than it looks in the camera. I'm going to link a tool down below that is very small ratchet torx wrench and it has been a lifesaver for many of these tiny installations. This requires a Torx 20 screw. Even with this small wrench, this is hard to see. Make sure the seat is lifted all the way up for the installation. After you remove the screw, you can just pull this plastic piece from the edge and you can just reach the seat control plug. We're just going to bypass the original Tesla connection with this new plug. You can simply pull on the connector and it will come out. Please do not pull on the cable. You need to reach the actual plug and pull it out. Space is again very tight. Then insert the male end of the Tesla plug into the female end of the new adapter. Then take the male end of the new adapter and plug it into the seat adjustment female port. Now with the popper wire routing, you are still able to put this in. As you can see, mine goes in. I just have to push it in just a little bit um, and it, it goes in. So I hit everything in the bottom here and routed all the cable. So here's what it looks like. It's not perfectly flushed, I guess, a little bit here because there's so much stuff in there, but it's a pretty good fit and we were able to fit everything inside. So we went from this air vent here that would be positioned somewhere right here to this air vent in the bottom. Okay, let's go over everything about this screen. First of all, these are your large air vents here. These are much, much better than the previous generation air vents. So I really like that, that you can even control the directions and we'll give you the airflow testing here using the paper method that we typically use here. In just a second, you got your two USB-C output here. And then if you look towards the bottom, you've got another USB-A here and then there's an SD card slot there. Uh, originally, they told me that that was for the cellular service, so you could put a SIM card, but I haven't been able to figure out how to put that SIM card, and Hanshaw told me that this unit does not support a 4G compatibility, so I'm not sure. I'll keep trying. If you know how to make that work, please let me know. But going over to the top, as you can see, uh, the unit itself, the design, it is flushed. It matches really well with the top. There is not the, a big gap here. It, it feels like it belongs in the car, just like any other unit. I like that, the cover that they put. Not too sure about the silver color. Maybe they should have made it like a matte uh, color or chrome delete. Um, I'm not sure if people really like this silver color, but you know, I don't mind it. It looks pretty good. It matches the Model S and S uh, refresh um, unit where it has that silver color in the back. But uh, let's go through each of these menu items here. To be honest with you, when I just look at it, I'm not too thrilled about the UI. Uh, this feels like a UI in the backward direction compared to what we saw on the last unit. But let's go through it anyway so I can show you everything that you need to know on this system. Here on the menu here, this brings up the home, which is here. This is back, uh, which we are here now, so we can't go back. This opens up whatever the other windows are open currently. Uh, so we are downloading, we are updating YouTube. We'll go over that in just a second. There is a floating menu here. So if you press this, it can also do everything here, including the voice control, the volume control, the light, the brightness, back, menu, and then turn off the screens. Now to turn on the air conditioning here, you gotta make sure that the air conditioning is on in the front. So the climate has to be turned on in the front screen. If it is not, then pressing this button is not going to do anything. But if it is turned on in the front, then you can just press this icon here. And as you see, the airflow UI turns on. So the graphics that you can see, and I start feeling the AC here to increase the fan speed, which keep in mind, it increases the fan speed for everything. So the entire car, now you start hearing that strong airflow here and uh, you also see the UI change. So it is a very less airflow here that is going. Now as we increase it, as you see that 
it, it also increases and the intensity increases. Uh, so that's pretty cool. You can't adjust where it goes. Uh, you have to manually adjust the flow here, but the UI is there. Another thing now you can control is the temperature here individually. So if you want to control increase the temperature here, that is just the driver side temperature. So you, it will increase the temperature on this side. Now if you do this here, it will increase the temperature on this side. Keep in mind that whatever you change right now, we have it set as like 60, so uh, 6.2 here on both sides. But if you look at it in the front, it is not going to change. So whatever you have, it is always going to be the same thing in the front. So we could change this to 75, but if we look at it there, that does not change. So this is not going to make that change in the front of screen, but it will make the actual change. So we increase the flow, we hear it, but if you look at the front of screen, nothing changed on that side. And to turn this off, all you have to do is press here, and then the air conditioning turns off for the back. Now the second menu here is um, a little bit busy uh, where this is for the individual seat heating control. So you can turn the heater on and off, you can turn it on for everything, you could go between different uh, intensity here and you can also do a one click close all so then that means it turns off for everything. This right side here is your passenger side seat control. So let's increase the lens here make it 0.5 so we can show what this looks like. So here, this is for the top unit. So the recline, recline front, recline back. So if I was to press here, as you can see, this is moving, recline back. This is for going forward and this is for going backwards. So the seat is moving towards the back, forward. So this is pretty handy. I like it because if you're sitting on the, the seat here and you want the front passenger seat to either move up or down, then you can easily control this. So that's pretty cool. There is nothing here. The first officer control, whatever that means, that means the seat control, I guess, but this is not TOG. I wish this was toggleable so that you could just turn this off and on, but that is not the case here. Now, um, let's go through the rest of the menu item here. In this one, you can see that you can control the uh, music. So whatever is playing in the car, you can increase, you can decrease. Um, this controls the actual front though, because if you look at it, uh, it made that change in the front. So you can see it's actually changing it in the front. So just keep that in mind. This changes the cars menu here. This is the music. Um, if you have downloaded MP3 uh, from the SD card or USB here, then you can put it right here. This is the media control. We'll get back to this menu here in just a second. And this is where you have a short code of the YouTube, Netflix, TikTok, and we'll go over each of those. Some of this may or may not work. And then finally, there is your volume. So this is the volume and this changes the volume for the unit here. So the speaker, uh, if you're playing through the speaker, then it changes that. Or if you're playing through the Bluetooth of the Tesla, then that changes the volume changes here as well. Then uh, let's go back to the menu here. Uh, there's a couple of things, the audio cast, you can go through here, then you can pair a new device. So you can pair the Bluetooth device. Um, this is how you are going to do it. Pair a new device, add a device name here, and then you are able to cast that audio from this to the Bluetooth device. Um, here are your settings. So you can go between language, the theme, the darkness, the brightness. So as you see, this does that. You can do the follow the light as well. Uh, Android time, car time, floating ball menu is this guy here. So if you don't want that, you can also turn that off here. Uh, so then this close, turn on, and then unit, of course, the Celsius versus Fahrenheit here. The system, uh, the sound is the, the sound here from that little speaker. We'll show you here in just a second. You can also go through the network setting, Android setting, factory setting, and this shows the version. So that's everything there is um, on that um, uh, settings here. This Z-Link 5 is for your Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Uh, you can connect that seamlessly. I don't find that very useful for rear passengers. So that's useful for front passengers, but rear passengers, I don't find that useful. Of course, there is Netflix, YouTube will test all of those here, and then you got your Play Store. So to connect your car to the Bluetooth of this device so you can play the audio, you gotta connect to this unit right here, Android BT 1734. That is what Tesla will play the audio through the Tesla speaker when you play something here. And if you go to the screen here, this is where you'll see it. 
active is Tesla Model Y. So let's go ahead and test some of these apps here. So if we go to the entertainment menu here, there is Netflix and we already signed into the Netflix and it worked just fine. We can surf through whatever we want to watch. Um, we can do TV shows and um, we can just play it and it, it works. So let's go ahead, play. It's pretty quick too and you're hearing the audio from the bottom here. So this is the built-in audio of the unit itself. Um, this is not the car's audio, it is the built-in audio from here, from the bottom. Now here is YouTube, this is our channel. It loads up pretty quickly, uh, depending on your internet speed. So we can go ahead and play any of this. So let's play the preview. So as you can see, there is no lag with the audio here, so which is pretty good. And um, I can just skip through it. I can play um, the forward. So this is pretty cool. Um, it works as expected. This is actually better than some of the other uh, units in the past. So it looks like they did some upgrading here. So you see like there is no lag here uh, with the built-in speaker and this has all been played through the built-in speaker. And if we go over here, we can actually change the quality. So if we wanted to advance and we can go all the way to 4K. So it supports super ultra high quality uh, videos here on this screen. So. So that's pretty cool. Um, they looks like they did some refining on the app. Uh, this is the first time I think any of this app had natively worked without needing to download an APK. So YouTube checks out. So this is going to be the calibration test here. I've got this paper here where we're going to put directly inside the air vent. The AC is on full blast, so 10. And over here, as you can see, we get a lot of air. So straight, we get a lot of air all the way up to here and I can even lift this a little bit and I'm still getting air over here from the rear and uh, if I go over here and then lift this towards the passenger side I get a lot of air still now if I lift this there okay so I get a little bit air here So we're gonna do the testing here now that we have successfully installed this unit and we're going to adjust the vents so that we can see where the air is going. Right now, I have blasted the air in the front 10, level 10. Now I'm gonna turn on the rear vents here. So when I press on this, the rear vent is on and we'll get the air. So as you can see, super strong air flowing right here. So directly in front, there is a lot of air and I have the vents facing to the straight in the middle right now, so this is what you get. But as soon as you start going up, you don't get that air. If you go back here, you still do, so it almost feels like the air is doing this, and I can feel the path, but more in the straight line here. So I can see it's super good here. I can see a little bit of air here, but if I go here, there's barely any air but if I kind of go down and if I face this towards the side, you see I start getting the air. So at least the adjustment of the air works really well. And here there's a lot of air, you can feel it. And if I go this way and adjust this vent towards me, as you can see, I can feel the air here, but as I go up, there's not much air. But over here, right over here, I feel it a little bit. As you can see, the paper is moving a little bit so I can feel it, but directly to my face, no air. With the original version, uh, you are able to lift the vent up, so you would be able to kind of feel it here. So up to here, to my body part, I can feel the air. So if I put the paper, you still see the air flowing, and the air is super strong. It can go all the way even towards here, but nothing on the top. So as you get in the top, you barely feel it. 
One thing I wanted to make you aware, right now I do not have any mic hookup. This is the raw sound that you're hearing from inside the car. Super quiet, but if I stop talking here for just a second, you'll hear some static, like a radio type of a noise coming from the speaker of this unit. So I'm gonna stop talking now so you can hear this. Now I'm gonna put this uh, camera closer to the speaker down here so you can hear what I'm talking about. So, as you can see, it is, um, it's like a radio sound and that's pretty common on some of the speakers that we have seen. It is the built-in speaker that is making that noise. Maybe my unit is just faulty or maybe some wires are crossed, I don't know. But in case you hear that, you're not alone. It looks like my unit is doing the same thing. Since I have reviewed a lot of these rear displays in the past and I seem to get the most common questions on all of them, there's a pattern of some of the questions that I receive. I wanted to answer those questions before even posting this video, but please continuously post those questions in the comment section so I can make follow-up videos, answer any of those questions, or directly I will engage with your comments on the comment section as much as possible to answer those questions. But here are some of the most common questions I have received in the past, including last week when I posted this same display video video I was just showing you a high level overview of what the display was about. One of the most common questions I get is can you connect two Bluetooth headsets at the same time? Unfortunately the answer is no. You can connect it but the audio output only goes to one Bluetooth headset at a time. Can you connect a gaming controller and a Bluetooth headset at the same time? Yes, you can do that. So you could have a Bluetooth headset where you are hearing that gaming sound and you could have that gaming controller where you can play the game at the same time. Only one Bluetooth headset and one gaming controller simultaneously. Another common question that I have gotten in the past is, is there a audio lag delay? Um, Unfortunately, there is still some delay when you play it through Tesla's speaker. So you can play it through Tesla's speaker and there is gonna be some delay that I have noticed. A work around that is if you're, let's say, playing a YouTube video and there is an audio delay, you can skip it a little bit forward or go back on the timeline and it seemed to catch up, but there is still some delay and you might still see a little bit of delay even if you do the scroll forward method. Uh, but other than that, with Bluetooth headphones or the internal speaker, there is absolutely no delay that I could notice from this display. So it's a lot better than the previous generation ones. Does things like Netflix, YouTube, Disney Plus work with this display? So that's one of the things that Netflix works seamlessly. Uh, no issues here, YouTube works, some of the other apps work, but there is no Disney Plus natively supported on this display. They told me that they're working on an APK solution where what basically APK, what it is, is a workaround, right? Like you download this application in a USB stick, bring it, connect it, and then you load it onto the display where you manually download the Netflix or Disney Plus. And they say that Disney Plus should work after that, but I have my doubts because the previous generation display, they said the same thing, they sent an APK, but Disney Plus just did not work. I could hear the audio, but there was no visual at all on Disney Plus. I hope it's not the case here, but I will let you know once I have that APK on hand. Another common question is, can you just not install the seat control if you don't want your kids controlling the front passenger seat? Yes, that is correct. You just you just skip that process. You just skip that wiring altogether. You would actually decrease the time of the installation and it works great. There's no issues, uh, either the seat control just won't work. Now, another thing I wanted to bring up is they do advertise it as there is a massage function with this display. And the way it works is if your car has a lumbar support, which my older Tesla Model 3 has it, but I couldn't demonstrate it here because the OBD plug that they sent me was for the Model Y. The Model 3 has a smaller OBD plug. So I couldn't test that. Maybe I'll do that in the future where if you have that lumbar support where the air kind of inflates and deflates in the back, then you can press on the scroll wheel button towards the left, I believe, and hold it and then the lumbar support, the massage turns on. So where it will just go back and forth and that's your massage module with this display. Again, I couldn't test it, but that's what they told me on the instructions manual also that is what it shows. Can you lock this display all together so that your kids are not messing with anything? You can't. Um, I have asked for this many, many times where can you make it so that you put a pin code somewhere so that when you are turning this display on, you require that pin code and it 
controls only a few things. So you can only have the entertainment but not climate control, or you can only have the entertainment and the little speaker and not in the front, but they haven't delivered on that. I really do hope that they work on a software solution to make that happen, where we should be able to just lock it and see what functions we want the kids to be able to control in the back. Another common question that I get is how does this get internet? Um, if I have a premium connectivity, can I just use the car's internet? Uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, you gotta use your phone's tethering, you gotta use your phone's hotspot to connect this um, on the go or your home Wi-Fi if you're in a garage. Uh, so you do need that Wi-Fi, external Wi-Fi, whether it be your phone's hotspot or if you wanna get one of those front displays, it has hotspots where you can now have a Wi-Fi in the car. I've reviewed some of those displays in the past here. but. You do need it. You do need your phone's um, hotspot to work. Even if you have a premium connectivity, you can't connect to Tesla's internet. It did say that in the beginning in the advertisement there was 4G was supported and there is a little slot in the bottom. I thought that was for 4G, but I got my SIM card stuck in there, so do not try it. That is not for a SIM card. It is only for a micro SD card, it seems like. I couldn't get my SIM card to work. I put a nano SIM card in there and it's stuck, so I gotta probably remove the display and figure out how I'm gonna remove that SIM card that is stuck in there. Uh, so that. I don't know, I, I couldn't figure it out. If you know how to do it, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll make a follow-up video showing you that, that process. But the 4G is not supported at the moment. I checked with Hanshu and they say this display does not have 4G. So I guess maybe it does not, but still there is an indication on the top that there is a little cell sign and I thought it had, but it does not. And one of the biggest questions that I always get um, with this displays is, is this going to void my warranty for Tesla? And that is a hard question to answer. I'm not a lawyer, uh, I can't give you legal advice, but we do have laws in place in the United States to protect consumers uh, from lawsuits or Tesla just voiding the warranty for any aftermarket accessory. Just because you install an aftermarket accessory, they cannot just void the warranty. However, let's say you install this display and then the wiring is messed up a little bit and you short circuited Tesla's computer, then yeah, it's your fault. Uh, Tesla will make you pay for the, the repair of whatever part it is. But let's say you messed up something on the installation or you yank the USB-C cable a little too hard or there's a damage and you gotta repair that. Tesla will just make you pay for the repair of that USB-C cable, not like your battery warranty. Like automatically, warranty is not a, okay, I have a big warranty on a Tesla. It, there's a battery warranty, there's a computer warranty, there's a AC unit warranty, drivetrain warranty. There's a bunch of different type of warranties. And just because you messed up something on one part of the car doesn't mean they are gonna void the warranty of your entire car. So that's a misconception that I typically see. There are a lot of accessories I have installed in the channel. I take it to Tesla and the Tesla techs are very stoked about, hey, how do you do that? Like the Subo mount, they were super interested. I showed them how to do it. Uh, yoke steering wheel. There are a lot of product that I installed and I take it to Tesla for different services or our needs and they have never, never, ever said that, oh, your warranty is voided because you install a front instrument cluster. No, that has never happened to me. But I have heard uh, some stories from consumers, uh, you know, viewers from our channel that they took it to Tesla and they said, yep, you install this aftermarket accessory, you gotta remove it, otherwise uh, you are gonna continuously have some issues. So there are certain things that could go wrong, but I have never heard where it, voids your warranty. So in summary, they upgraded a couple of things in this display compared to the previous generation. First of all, the large air vents. I love it. It's not far fetched but it's much, much better than the previous generation version. So that was one upgrade they did. Another huge one is built in a speaker. We never used to have that. There was never a built-in speaker on any of the previous generation displays. So having that is a great plus so that you can just have the audio in the back and then the front audio could be something else for your Tesla. So those two things are huge. Another thing is some of the apps natively work now, like Netflix, I didn't have to download an APK. Whatever they loaded in the display actually work and I hope that they get to uh, work on other APKs and they make it work for other apps as well. Overall, this is a great unit. Uh, I think this is great for people who have kids uh, that you travel with in the back seat so that they can watch TV, they can watch YouTube, they can play games, uh, and then also climate control wise. I also really like the control of the front passenger seat. Um, I need that. I have passengers in the back and then in the front, so the back passenger can just decide how much space that they need so they can control that. It's 
especially because I have a seven seater and sometimes I do have seven people in the car. So being able to adjust the middle seat um, and then adjust the front seat is an awesome idea. So I really like it. Thank you very much for watching this video and supporting our channel. I hope you enjoyed today's video and found it helpful. If you did, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share our videos, spread the word out about these accessories and our videos so that we can constantly bring more videos like this in the future. Thank you very much. I'll be back again with another Tesla accessory.